Hey Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I feel like everybody's so pushed back. <laughs> Can everybody see me okay? <laughs> All right. Well, it is good to be here this morning, and I uh, appreciate the opportunity. Um, I don't, I don't claim to be anything good. I don't claim to be a good preacher. Um, the Lord just called me to do this, and I try to do it to the best of my ability. And I know that there's nothing good within me, and there's nothing that I could say that would help anybody. But if you'll listen to what the Lord has for you, that's when we can get help. Amen. Amen. I'm going to sing a song or two, and then we'll get into the Word of, Word of God. Tell us 
Those high mountains move One thing I found That I really want you to know Oh, if it matters to you It matters to the Master He wants to share the burdens you bear Whisper peace when your world gets shattered If it's your greatest joy Or your deepest pain Or you're really needing an answer If it matters to you It matters to the Master The giver and maker of life is far too busy to care about your trouble and strife. He sees the sparrow that falls to the ground. He hears the tears that don't make a sound. If you only knew how precious you are in His sight. Oh, if it matters to you, it matters to the Master. He wants to share the burdens you bear. Whisper peace when your world gets shattered. If it's your greatest joy, or your deepest pain, or you're really needing an answer, if it matters to you, it matters to the Master. If it matters to you, it matters to the Master. Amen. I'm thankful for that this morning. No matter what we go through, He's always interested, whatever it is. Amen. If y'all go with me to the book of Matthew, chapter number 9. <clears throat> We'll be in the book of Matthew chapter number 9 this morning. And uh, I really appreciate whenever I go to a church and the Sunday school teacher gets up. And I really like whenever it's right in line with what I think I'm going to preach. Amen. I didn't even tell Brother David that uh, you mentioned a lot of stuff about what I'm going to be preaching on today. And I think that's just the Lord working things out. And I appreciate that. But uh, the book of Matthew chapter number 9 begin reading in the verse number 35 through verse number 38. The Bible says, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues. I better put this on before they jump on to me. I forgot. He told me I could if I wanted to, that they record. And I forgot, so my apologies. All right, book of Matthew, chapter number 9, verse number 35. The Bible says, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when He saw the multitudes, He was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, God, I thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to be here. 
Lord, I thank You, God, for another opportunity, Lord, to stand and proclaim Your Word, proclaim Your message. Lord, I know that within myself, God, I can't do anything. Lord, I pray, God, You just please help me. Lord, I pray that You touch me, Lord, that You calm my nerves, that I might be easily understood. Lord, I pray, God, You just please touch Your people this morning and help us. Lord, we thank You, God, for doing everything that You've done. And Lord, we want to thank You for what You're going to do. Thank You for dying on the cross for our sins. Lord, we thank You, God. We praise You. Help us, Lord, I pray. Amen. Here in this passage of Scripture, I got the thought of, I want to preach this morning on seeing sinners the way Jesus saw sinners. Seeing sinners the way Jesus saw sinners. Notice that in this passage of Scripture, the Bible says that Jesus healed every sickness and every disease among the people. There wasn't anyone that He came in contact with that He could not heal and that He could not cure. Amen? We see that there was nobody that came to Him and they had an issue that He could not solve. And I thank God that He, he solved my issue one day. May the 4th, 2014, on a Sunday night, He saved me as a 15-year-old boy, and I ain't been the same since. But He cured me from all sin that was in my life. And we also see that He didn't charge anybody any money that came to, to ask of Him to be healed and for, them to, for Him to, uh, to save them or heal them of their sickness, of their ailment, whatever it was, we see that Jesus didn't ask anything in return. Can I say that if He would have asked me to pay for something, I couldn't have paid Him, amen? Because I don't have anything that He wants besides for me to serve Him. That's all He wants whenever He saves uh, a sinner, amen? But we get, into the, we get into the message here, and the Bible says that in verse number 36, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. And can I say, I feel like a lot of times what happens in, in my life is I have a lack of compassion for people. I have a lack of compassion. I have a lack of love. And if you'll be honest this morning, you probably have that same problem. You'll go out and you'll see somebody that's, that's lost and they'll be, they'll, let's just be honest, some people nowadays... You can just tell if they're, they're, they're lost, amen, by their, their appearance. And we self-consciously, we subconsciously, we judge people and we look at them and we look on their outward appearance and we see what's out here. But can I say when God, when He looks at the sinner, He don't look on the outward appearance. He looks at the heart. He looks at the soul. And He sees that they're a sinner. Can I say, number one, we see that Jesus, as He looks upon sinners, He sees them as sheep with no shepherd. Jesus sees sinners as sheep that don't have a shepherd to lead them. Not only are they sheep without a shepherd, they're starving sheep. The Bible says that they, they fainted. They fainted. The reason they fainted was because they had no strength. And they had no nourishment. They had no shepherd to feed them and take care of them. Can I say, whenever you're saved, you have a, you have a shepherd. Amen. If you go to church and you have a pastor, you have a preacher, you have a shepherd that, open, that, that that's every Sunday, every Wednesday, they open the Word of God and they feed you and they give you nourishment. Friends, people out there in the world that's lost, they don't have that. They're, they're, they're out there and they're sheep without a shepherd and they're starving. They're starving sheep. You know how Jesus sees sinners around us? He sees them as sheep with no shepherd. And they're starving to death and they're on their way to hell. That's how Jesus sees sinners. Not only does He see them as sheep with no shepherd, but He sees them uh, not only as scattered sheep, but as, as starving sheep, but they're scattered sheep. They're scattered sheep. Can I ask us this morning, do you remember before you got saved how you, how you was going through this life? You was going through this life aimlessly. You had, you had no hope of tomorrow. You was just living your normal life. You was going about your everyday activities. You was just, you was just living. You had no idea what it was like to be saved. Does anybody remember what it was like before you got saved? Amen. There's one or two of you in here, alright? Amen. But before you got saved, you had no direction, and the direction you was going was the wrong direction. Amen? That, that you're scattered abroad. You had nothing to live for. You had no hope for tomorrow. You didn't have that hope that we have in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You were scattered abroad. You were scattered like a sheep with no shepherd. And that's how Jesus sees sinners. He sees them as sheep with no shepherd. They're starving and they're scattered. They're starving and they're scattered. Then I see that also he sees them without, uh, with no, also with no sheep without a shepherd. He sees them 
with grain with no gatherers. The Bible says in verse number 37, Then he saith unto the disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. He sees them as grain that needs to be gathered. We have more grain than we have gatherers. We have plenty of grain, but we don't have enough people to go out and gather them. That's how Jesus sees sinners. He sees them as sheep with no shepherd and grain with no gatherers. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Can I say, if we're going to have a mind like Christ, we have to see sinners the way Jesus saw sinners. We have to see sinners the way Jesus saw sinners. Oftentimes we see what we want to see. We see what we want. We, we make our conclusions. But Jesus sees beyond the outward appearance and of the sinners. He sees beyond uh, what our eyes see. He sees the sinner's heart and the eternity of their soul. Can I say that's the way Jesus found you? He didn't look on your outward appearance. He didn't look at uh, what you could offer Him, but He looked upon your heart. He looked upon your soul. And He's seen that there was no way that you could be saved unless He was the one that done the saving. Amen? And a lot of times we look at people and we say, well, I just don't know if they can be saved. Does anybody know anybody that's, they're just rough? Amen? Does anybody know anybody that's just rough? They're just rough. They're lost. They're rough. They know they're rough. And they like to be rough. Amen? And we, we, sometimes we think, I just don't know if they can save them. I just don't know if the Lord can save them. Can I say, we just need to leave that up to the one that does the saving. Amen? The Bible says that all, could, that all would come to the knowledge of truth. All would come to, uh, uh, to Him. Amen? The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. We're not, to, we're not supposed to go out in this world and say, Well, I don't think they can be saved. Amen. We're not the ones that does the saving. The Lord is. Let's just leave that up to Him. Amen. I hope today that this ain't go, just going over our heads. You're going, to get, you're going to go out in this world and you're going to see all kinds of people. Amen. You're going to see all kinds of things. We went, we went to Dollywood yesterday. Anybody ever been to Dollywood? Two or three Evans. All right. We went to Dollywood yesterday, and uh, we was walking around, and I'm telling you, there's, there's, there's so much sin in the world today, church. These people walking around, and these, these, my, I don't even want to get into all of it. And these, these girls walking around with girls, boys walking around with girls, these boys walking around looking like girls, girls walking around looking like boys. Can I say, there's so much sin in this world, and they're wanting to be accepted, Amen. That's what they want. They want to be accepted and they're trying to push it down people's throats to accept it. And we, we, we look at that and we see that and we think, man, I'll be honest, I seen it yesterday and it made me sick. Amen. But then I, I told Carly, I said, you know what? I said, I feel bad after thinking about that because my same Jesus that died for me, He died for them. Amen. He marched up Calvary's hill and He spread out His arms. He laid on that cross and He took them nails in His hands, not only for me, not only for you, but for every one of them people as well. And they just don't know it. They're out there as grain with no gatherers. Amen? We should be those gatherers that go out in this world today and everybody that we come in contact with. The people on our... If you're kids, you go to school, people at school, your classmates, us that go to work, our, work, our workmanship men, our people we go to work with, our co-workers, teachers, if you, go to, if you, if you teach and you, your co-workers at work, uh, people we see at a grocery store. I mean, we see people all, all throughout our day and we have no idea what they're going through. But we've we got to keep in mind that there's plenty of people out there that's grain, and we're supposed to be the gatherers to go out and bring them into the house of the Lord and be a light and a witness to them because that's the only way that they're going to get saved. Amen? Jesus sees them as grain with no gatherers. Grain as no gatherers. Can I say that, say that this morning that there is no sin, there is no failure, there is no background, there is no appearance. There is no wickedness. There is no wickedness so vile of a person that the gospel of Jesus Christ cannot reach down and penetrate their dark heart and save them before it's everlasting too late. Amen? Jesus can save. Romans chapter 5, verse 20 says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where the sin did abound, and grace did much more abound. Amen? I thank God for His mercy and His grace. Let's not only look at what Jesus saw this morning, but let's look at what Jesus said. Verse number 37 and 38. The Bible says, Then saith he, he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Then he said, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Jesus said, Pray and pray for laborers. 
that of, of this church. Whenever you pray, pray that out of this church there'll be laborers go out into the field and, and that they'll gather the grain that needs to come into the house of the Lord. And you pray, and it won't be very long, a couple days, a couple weeks, you'll start thinking, man, I, I kind of want to go out there and witness to people. Amen? If you'll pray for this church specifically, and you'll start praying, God, send people for this church, Lord will start, deal, start dealing with you about going out and witness to people. Amen? He'll start dealing with your heart. And you're, you're going to be the one to go do the work. You're going to be the one to go across that street, knock on that door. Hey, some people might want to go to the mission field. I know that your piano player, uh, is, she's a missionary. She goes, she goes to Africa. And I know that she goes and she witnesses people over there. And you might say, well, I can't be a missionary. No, but you might be able to go across your road. Amen? You might be able to go across the road and knock on your neighbor's door. Amen? How, how long has it been since you went across the road and you ask a neighbor if they're lost? How long has it been since you ask a coworker if they're saved? How long has it been since you asked somebody you go to school with? For, hey, kids, how long has it, been, has, it, has it been since you asked one of your classmates if they're saved? How long has it been since you gave your testimony to somebody that's lost? How long has it been since you gave your testimony to a family member that's lost? How long has it been since you just witnessed to somebody about the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Hey, we may not have to go to Africa, but we could go across the street. We could go across the parking lot. We could go across the grocery store. We could go across the restaurant. And just give our testimony to somebody who's dying and going to hell. Amen. We ought to see sinners the way Jesus saw sinners. He didn't look on the outward appearance. It didn't matter what kind of car they drove. It didn't matter what kind of clothes they wore. He looked upon their heart. And he seen what was in their heart. And he seen that he wasn't in there. Amen. There's a, there's a, there's a world full of people out here, church, that they're out there and they're just grain that need to be gathered. And they're just sheep without a shepherd. I say, let's leave here today encouraged and charged to go out and tell this lost and dying world that there is a Savior, that He still saves, and there's a good shepherd out there, and He's my shepherd. Amen? Amen. I'm done preaching this morning. Let's all stand. I'm going to turn it over to Brother Matt.